Hey guys! As I received multiple requests to make a tutorial for a cake topper, here it is. It's my first tutorial video so please bear with me. I do like going straight to the point so if you feel I missed any crucial step, please let me know in the comments and I will add it. So the total time of me making the design is about an hour and a half. I will show you the main steps to keep it video shorter and informative. So let's start. Uh, this cake topper is from my mother-in-law who will be turning 50 so I decided um, on a summary theme and a number only. Uh, to save time I have designed the cake topper already. Um, just wanted to let you know that every image that I'm using here um, is part of the design space subscription. For the number and for the name if you choose to do a name, you can use an image or use a text. In this tutorial I just use text typed 50 and nothing will change in the next steps whether you choose uh, text or image uh, next we're going to choose the font just remember there is no right or wrong font as I've mentioned to save time I already chose the images as this is the longest process my suggestion is to go through a design space, pick every single image that you think will fit and we'll try to work with that. Most likely 90% of what you chose will go, but at least you will have a good number of images to work with. I think I started with the 40. Suggestion number two is not to choose the items that will have really small details. Unless it will be big, at least one and a half, two inches image and cut, Rickett might have really hard time to cut the small pieces. And even if it will, it might be a bit tough to glue it all together. So try to find something with larger details if you know that it will be less than one inch in size. As you can see, I like to use a combination of both large and small items in my cake toppers. But if you know it will be a large cake topper with only a few big details, don't worry about the sizing. Now when we have the images, we need to put it all together to make it look nice. Keep in mind that if you will have a background that will hold everything together, there won't be a lot you can change when you'll be assembling it. I will show you why in a moment. So for example, let's take my little turtle here. Because it's in the edge, the background will have a little form of the turtle. So if you move the turtle anywhere else after the cake topper will be cut, it will just leave an empty space and it will just look weird. But for example, with the cocktail, it doesn't matter where we'll put it later because the outline of the background will not catch it. I hope it makes sense. First, we need to remove the grid on the Design Space Canvas. To do so, we're going to click on the corner of the grid button twice. For the whole cake topper, before taking a screenshot, we need to first select all the parts and click Weld on the bottom right. Then we're going to take a screenshot of the whole cake topper And then undo the welding by clicking undo button on the top left of design space. And now we will move the rest of the images to the side and take screenshots of them. To make it easier, let's put all the screenshots that we just took and put them on the desktop on the side. Now we will go and open our software called Inkscape. I will add the link to download the software in the description below. Um, it's very handy if you make your own SVGs, but unfortunately I do not have any tutorials and it's just I do not know all the ins and outs of the software. Uh, but I will show you just the main feature I'm using it for and it's just to basically create background, backgrounds for uh, cake toppers and cards. The software is absolutely free and you can download it and install it on either Mac or Microsoft. Now we will create a single background for all the images except the number. For the number we will create two backgrounds because I like to add glitter card stock in the middle just to give it a little pop of the color. First we will drag the image into Inkscape, we'll click OK, then we'll click on Path trace bitmap 
We'll first go to multiple scans and select smooth and remove background. Then we'll click back on single scan. We'll click update to see how well Inkscape traced our image. Now we can see that because it's in black, I know that Inkscape did trace it well, but it didn't really do a good job with the rest of the image. So now the key is to find the brightness threshold just, just as high to trace the whole image. Let's try 0 0.6. It's getting there, but not just yet. Let's just try 0 0.7. Okay, so we got the top part, we're just missing the bottom. Let's try 0 0.8. Perfect, so now we know that the whole image is traced. We will click OK and then exit. So now you, if you will drag the image, you'll see that the copy of the original one is still there. We don't need it, we just can select it, right click and delete. We will work just with our traced bitmap. And now um, I do recommend to make the screen larger so you will see better what's happening. Uh, to do that, just press plus sign on the keyboard. Perfect. Now we will click here, edit path by nodes. We'll choose this cursor. We'll click anywhere on the image and you can see that it's nice trace it, it's nicely done over here and now to do the background we click path outset as you can see it now uh, became thicker and that's exactly what we're looking for there is again no right or wrong way to do it you can do a really nicely thin background just to kind of add the outline and make it easier for you to assemble the image if it's if it's um, for multiple parts just like our trees or it can make even thicker to have maybe gl uh, glitter cardstock like I will do for the number for this particular one I like you to have um, a thin background just to make it easier to assemble so I like how it looks right now I will click file save as I'll change the name to palm trees make sure that the format it's saving in its Inkscape SVG and you click save and here it is now the next images will be same step um, just very repetitive I'll show you one more just uh, for you to get more uh, to see how I'm doing it so we don't need this one right click delete we already finished this one we will now drag 50 so now as I mentioned I will be doing two backgrounds for 50 so again let's just go over the steps we'll click path trace bitmap and 0.8, it looks perfect. It's all now in dark color. That means I traced it nicely. We'll click OK and then exit. Again, we will move this image. Oh, we'll have to change the cursor first. We will move it. We'll remove the original image because we don't need it anymore. We'll click Delete. Let's move it back. We'll choose the other cursor, Edit by pa uh, Path by Nodes again. Again, we can nicely see that it's um, all traced. We'll click Path, Outset. Now, the first background that I'll be doing, I will be choosing the outset just as soon as they touch the numbers. The numbers to touch. Um, so I, I think I need one more. Perfect. So it touches, and that's why I want it. Um, again, it's really up to you. You can make thicker, thinner. Um, actually, maybe I'll get just one more. Yeah, that looks good. Now I'll click File, Save As, and I will do it. Um, I'll name it 50 1, and we'll click Save. And I'll click on it just one more. Once more to trace it again, I'll click path and then outset again, probably twice. I really like have, having 
really bold numbers and names and that's what I'm going for and I love it we will click file save as and 50 dash 2 okay so now we have our palm trees and 250s the rest of the images will uh, have exactly the same steps we will remove this one you can either remove or just close the whole software and reopen it again it's really up to you whatever you feel that you're more comfortable with so let's just do one more just for the sake of the example we'll drag the image click ok then we will click again path trace bitmap multiple scans smooth remove background single scan 0.8 looks good click ok and close we will remove the original image as we do not need it anymore and we'll go again click on edit path by notes nicely traced path outset and we need it really thick to have no holes in the middle so we'll click path outset and once again and once again you can always use the um, shortcuts that are shown here as well I'll be using that just to um, make it easier and we want the least gaps as possible if you have few small ones it's okay I'll show you how to remove them so I think this is thick enough then you click anywhere on the screen that's not on the image okay you can see you have these little gaps now what we're gonna do we click again path break apart you see they disappeared now we'll click again on path and union what it does it just welds all together and now we have a nice and solid background for our cake topper we will click file save as and we'll, click, we'll uh, name it background here we have it for the sun and the turtle will be exactly the same steps as before So now when we have the backgrounds for all of our images, we'll just need to upload them into Design Space. To do that, we'll click Upload, Upload Image, and we're going to just browse, choose our background. So let's do Palm Trees, Open. Because it's an SVG, you don't have to do really anything else and just click Save. And here we have it. And now we just need to upload, just click all of them. And click insert images. Perfect, here they are. So I jumped a little bit of ahead and I did already assemble it all together in design space and I chose my colors but I still want to show you a few tricks that I'm using um, when doing that so first I'll just use my turtle as an example when we just uploaded the backgrounds the turtle was the turtle background was a bit oversized so first what we need to do is make it look aligned we'll put it behind a, a turtle and we'll just resize it just gonna to try to see that it matches nicely now it will be much easier to highlight align and center just to see if it's nice so if you can see the background just got a, li a little bit of law just lost in the background so we'll make it a bit bigger highlight all array align center now it's a bit too big so I'll just do it oops we want to never resize the original image because remember that the background 
is in the same size as the original image so make sure you do not resize the original just the background I'll highlight the background I'll make it a bit smaller highlight align center nice it's not too big it's not too small that's exactly how I wanted it I'll highlight group just to make sure it's not gonna be moving anywhere and I'll put it back here in my on my cake topper for the colors I always use the color sync option it's very handy just to make sure you don't have too many colors that are not aligned for example I wanted the umbrella to be the same color as the drink and I didn't notice that it put the same color as the glasses so sometimes the colors just they look the same but actually they, they aren't in, in Cricut design space so what we do we're just gonna move the umbrella so now the drink the umbrella and the seashell will be exactly the same color um, same thing with the yellow I want the five to be in gold same color as the Sun we'll just drag it here and here we go so I use this for a few reasons one uh, to reduce material amount of material I'm using I don't want to waste too much material that in just different colors I don't want to be too overwhelming uh, when I'll be cutting it so just I really try to align the colors for example I want both glasses to be black so let me just move them here we go um, and also it's gonna save you time it will it will use less mats uh, when you will be cutting it so just make sure that the colors are exactly how you want them so I want red glasses uh, ruby pink color over here for uh, the three items the flip-flops two shades of purple I want the older background to be in blue uh, light blue for the main background the little turtle and the umbrella sign at uh, the umbrella side here I uh, will be in green we'll have three shades of green some gold some sand color um, also have here an extra layer that I'm not sure where it came from I think it's the glasses we're actually going to remove it oh it's the background okay so actually since I want all the backgrounds to be in blue I will drag this color into blue it's just easier to see and we have a little umbrella let's just put it the same colors as the trunk again just to save material um, and time and we will be cutting it and nice that's exactly how I want it so I think it's a good time to go and start cutting it 